When reading about naval history, it's common to see sailors aboard a Navy ship described only as a group, the crew, and not as individuals. Over various eras, some specific jobs or ratings may come to mind, but that only covers the professional side of the sailor's life. The actual day-to-day -day personal life of shipboard sailors is often not discussed. After all, the ship is not only the individual's work site, but the sailor's home, too. In the 19th and early 20th centuries, one item belonging to each sailor and marine aboard ship represented that personal life more than any other. And in the few images of this time showing sailors' free time, it was hiding in plain sight. This most precious possession, the individual's tiny bit of personal space on board ship, was the ditty box. The ditty box was where the sailor kept his valuables, personal hygiene gear, trinkets, souvenirs, writing materials, and letters from home. In fact, it was so sacred to the individual that an insult to another man's character in the day was, he's so low, he'd go through another man's ditty box. Ditty boxes were in use in U.S. Navy ships from the early 1800s until the World War II era on ships of older construction. I've known of these and have looked for one for many, many years and recently was fortunate enough to find one. And not only did I find one, this one is both identified and dated. This ditty box belonged to able seaman George J. Rodemick, who served aboard the armored cruiser USS Maryland between 1906 and 1910. In this presentation, we'll get an overview of the ditty box and its history. In future presentations, we'll look at the owner of this particular box, as well as the various kinds of possessions he may very well have kept within. The name Diddy Box is derived from another of the sailor's possessions, the Diddy Bag which was a linen or cotton canvas bag that contained personal items. And of course, when I decided to show this particular World War II ditty bag for my collection, I couldn't remember where I'd put it, and it took me two weeks to find. Nonetheless, here it is. You'll see I've placed a quarter next to the bag, so there's an idea of scale. Interestingly, the term ditty bag is actually still in use in the Navy today. When enlistees arrive at Recruit Training Command in Great Lakes, Illinois, they are given a ditty bag issue that includes personal hygiene and laundry gear, stationery, towels, certain articles of clothing, and the Blue Jackets Manual, the Sailor's Handbook. If you go to Merriam-Webster's Dictionary, they say the first use of the expression ditty bag was circa 1860, and the first known use of ditty box was circa 1880. Well, they kind of missed the mark on both of those dates. After some quick research, the earliest use for these terms I've found is around 1827 for Diddy Bag and around 1839 for Diddy Box. And in the references for each of these, it's clear from the context that these were expressions that were established and in common usage for many years before those dates. Explanations as to the origin of the word ditty when referring to the bag or the box are diverse, often far-fetched, and completely inconclusive. In the U.S. Navy, the most common is the myth passed from generation to generation that ditty came from the word ditto because the ditty bag was supposed to contain duplicates of each item two needles, two spools of thread, etc. But there's no solid evidence of this idea anywhere. What is clear is that the earliest uses of ditty bag referred to a sailor's personal needles, thread, and patches for mending the uniform. In these days, the bag may also have been home to other personal items, including valuables. By the heyday of the ditty box, though, this is definitely the case, as the box had a built-in lock.
In the late 18 and early 1900s, all sailors were allocated a personal bag for uniforms and equipment, often painted black and suspended from a horizontal rail. Although ship's property, these were similar to a sea bag, which to this day is a personal piece of luggage a sailor takes from assignment to assignment throughout his or her career. Ditty boxes were kept in racks nearby or above the bags. The boxes were eventually numbered on the outside to identify their owners and became items that sailors would have to sign a receipt of accountability in order to receive this issued item. The size and particulars of ditty boxes altered over time. In earlier days, ornate inlaid wood boxes were common, perhaps with brass corners or other decoration. They might also be fitted with brackets and rope handles, but those eventually would disappear. By the late 19th century, the size had standardized to 14 inches by 10 inches by 9 inches. In fact, plans for new ships in this era included specifics for racks to hold ditty boxes of these dimensions. The ditty box itself had several sections to it. It had a compartment within its two inch top separated by a lid with a hinge that could hold writing materials and letters and could also fold down to form a small writing surface. The bottom section of the ditty box was topped by a removable tray that had a compartment for an inkwell, a section for pens and pencils, and other sections for whatever valuables the sailor wanted quick access. The large remaining portion of the bottom section of the box housed professional and personal items that the owner held dear. Sailors could only access their ditty boxes at specific times during the day within the ship's routine, such as after reveille, meal times, and after knocking off ship's work, i.e. at the end of the workday. They could also access them freely on Sundays and holidays. At these times, a ditty box might become a seat, several boxes might become a card table, and multiple boxes might be borrowed from shipmates to make a more elaborate writing desk. The owner of this box, George Rodemick, had it for his first four years in the Navy when he served aboard USS Maryland. This was the longest assignment of his career. When Rodemick transferred, he took this box with him, probably without permission, as he had a brass plaque engraved with his name, the name of the ship, and dates he served there. This plaque was not a standard part of the ditty box, so it's clear that Rodemick had this made up on his own. In the next presentation, we'll delve into Rodemick's background and find some surprising details about his naval service and his life.